Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the Asian Pacific Math Olympiad 2002. Problem number two. I suggest you try this number theory problem out, especially if you're just getting more comfortable with divisibility, you've done some number theory, and I suggest you try it out for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally 45 to an hour, not more than 90 minutes. And if you'd like to go along with us, give this a go for the next 10 minutes and now let's begin. So what do we do here? We have to find all positive integers a and b such that both of these are integers. So in other words, we have b squared minus a divides a squared plus b and a squared minus b divides b squared plus a. So my question, my first question here is, is there something you notice about our problem statement here? Take two minutes and see like, is there anything you notice here in general? And this is a sort of a big picture, like mental heuristic, like noticing symmetries. And his, the symmetry here is like, if I switch A and B in every single instance, I still get the same thing, right? So nothing changes, which means I can, without loss of generality, say, well, let's say without loss of generality, A is greater than or equal to B, right? If it's not, I switch and I still have the same solution there. So now we're going to be looking at these solutions. Now, given A is greater than or equal to B, what else do you see? Well, this side is kind of bigger than this side, almost always, right? If A is greater than or equal to B. Like for big A, if A is, say, and A is then at least, if A isn't equal to B, we can look at them in cases now. If A isn't equal to B, then this is at least like B plus one square, like this needs to be greater than or equal to this. However, that's a bit, sounds a bit unlikely. In fact, what we have here is we have B squared plus B. So actually let's write this as B times B plus one is greater than or equal to a squared minus a or a times a minus one greater than or equal to right but a is greater than or equal to b how often are you going to be actually how often are you going to have this thing and the answer is not often because if a is at least b plus two then this is at least b plus one this is at least b plus two and you have a contradiction straight away. So if A is greater than or equal to B, then what we have is that from here it follows, given this, A is equal to B or A is equal to B plus one, right? Can A be equal to B, if A was equal to B plus two, it's good to have, you know, double to check things twice here a times a minus one. It's a divisibility relationship. This is positive. This is positive. So we're in the clear. So either this is true or this is true. And now we have those two cases. So if a is equal to b, this whole thing becomes a times a minus one divides a times a plus one. What divisibility you can cancel out these things if you have like b times c divide like a times c divides a times b it's the same as b divides c actually it's c divides b i forgot the order in which i said and you can really just say like there exists a case such that this times k is equal to this you cancel out the a's there still exists a case such that a k times a1 is a plus one k times a minus a1 is equal to a plus one right it's the same k and so that's why you can cancel it. Now, this means that a minus one divides when we subtract a minus one from this, we're gonna get a minus one divides two. And so a, a minus one is either one or two, which means a is going to be either two or three. And then the solutions are, what's it called? There's two, two and two, three which gives us the solutions to two and actually free, free, not two, free, because A is equal to B here. 
I invite you to pause for the next five, 10 minutes, try to prove the next case. And what you have is that in the other case, A is equal to B plus one. And now what we have here is given A is equal to B plus one, we can look at both of these, which one's better. You're literally just looking at which one do I, would I rather work with. I don't have a, I don't have a preference now and I just want to substitute A for B. So this one becomes B squared minus B minus one divides B plus one squared plus B. Now that's going to be interesting. This is b squared minus b minus one. When I subtract b squared minus b minus one once from this, I get this divides. So I get three b, I add a b, I get four b, I get one, I add a one, I get it two. Now this is positive. It needs to be greater than or equal to this, which, well, if b is equal to one, we have one solution, I think there. But that's actually, that's just one of the cases. The other one is that we have a squared minus b or b plus one minus b, which is b squared plus b plus one needs to divide b squared plus b plus one, which is the case, yeah, because then that's where we have this is equal to this. So we need this to be true. And now we can bound, we know if this is true, we know that, that this needs to be true as well. And with that, we need b squared to be less than or equal to 5b plus 3. Now the question is, how can we factor this nicely to get rid of a lot of cases? Well, we can say it's like b times b minus 5 needs to be less than or equal to 3, which means that b needs to be less than or equal to 5. And now we can literally just check every single one of those cases cases b equals one, two, three, four, five. To check if there's actually a divisibility here. So for five there, for five, I don't think there will be a divisibility relation, but actually we can just check it out. So for five, we have what? We have 22 here. We have 20, 19, 19, for five doesn't work. Four, we have four times three. I'm looking at b times three minus one. Four times three is 12. 12 minus 1 is 11. Here we have 18. Doesn't work. And then we for 3, we have 3 times 2, which is 6. Minus 1 is 5. Here we have a 14, so a 3 doesn't work either. A 2 gives us a 1 on this side, so it has to work out. So 2, 3 is a solution. And for one, we also have it works out. So one, two is also a solution. And then the solutions are one, two, two, three, two, two, three, three, and two, one, and three, two. And this finishes up the problem. So as you can see, this is a divisibility problem. What you're trying to see, it's a divisibility problem, but what you're trying to see here is first you notice symmetry. And then you realize, okay, when I have symmetries, I can get an extra condition. And here it's useful because these are things of the same degree. And because of that, I know that one side can't, this side should be roughly bigger than this one. But if A is bigger than B, then that's going to be very, very diff. Then that's going to be kind of pretty difficult. And then we prove that. And we are left with two cases, A's B or A's B plus one. And then that finishes up, the problem just finishes up from there into a couple of case work, into a couple of cases, which is totally doable. And sure it's an old problem, but I think it helps build you this technique of sort of seeing like size, comparing sizes between the divisor and the thing that's being divided. This finishes up our problem and as always, thanks for problem solving.